Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Mayor Bloomberg, um, and also uh, Mayor Kassab and all the other mayors and city officials in the audience and ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to have this opportunity to address you at this important forum in this great metropolis on the critical role of cities in addressing climate change. I think when the public imagines scenes of climate change, they probably call up pictures of shrinking glaciers, parched landscapes, rising seas, dramatic shifts in weather patterns over wide expanses. Yet this may be ironic because cities are the future of climate change. City residents are responsible for more than 80% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Just the cities in the C40 alone account for 12% of global greenhouse gas emissions. At present, the vast majority of these emissions are in developed countries, but that's changing fast as the cities of emergent economies grow at rapid pace. The World Bank Group was established some 65 years ago to work with national governments and later with private sectors in developing countries. Yet climate change highlights our need through groups such as the C40 to deepen our partnerships directly with cities. These basic facts speak to the importance of the group and why the World Bank Group and I have invested in the C40. Cities will also pay a very big price of climate change. We believe that some 80% of the 70 to $100 billion it will cost each year through the year 2050 to adapt to climate change are in sectors closely related to cities, including water supply, coastal zones, and infrastructure. More than 6,000 cities and local governments have already announced greenhouse emission reductions. And when the world's largest cities pledge to work together on energy efficiency, clean energy programs, adaptation, and mitigation strategies, they can be a powerful force for global change. So I'd like to thank Mayor Gilberto Kassab for hosting this C40 Mayor Summit. I understand that the municipality of Sao Paulo has established the target of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 30% by the year 2012. So we could not have asked for a better host to spur action on climate change. I'd also like to thank Mayor Michael Bloomberg and President Bill Clinton for their leadership on cities and climate change. The partnership between the C40 and the Clinton Climate Initiative can be both catalytic and dynamic. By joining forces, these two groups will be better able to make practical, measurable advances to address climate change, building on some of the lessons that the Clinton Climate Initiative has already learned through more than 100 pilots in several cities. Let me just give you one example. The C40 cities generate about 440,000 tons of waste every day, about half of which is organic, generating methane, a very powerful greenhouse gas. The Clinton Climate Initiative's composting projects in Lagos and New Delhi have been able to return waste material to agricultural lands, which have lost about 30 to 70 percent of their carbon over past centuries. So building on these pilot projects, C40 cities may be able to both improve food security while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Mayor Bloomberg has been an extraordinary leader on climate change in New York City. His plan, New York City, calls for a 30% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. Mayor Bloomberg's Greener, Greater Buildings legislation supports city energy conservation code, including energy audits and energy efficiency retrofits in city buildings. <clears throat> this legislation is expected to reduce New York City's greenhouse gas emissions by nearly 5%, save New Yorkers an average $700 million annually in energy costs, and create some 17,000 jobs over coming years. I'm also delighted that the World Bank Group is expanding our existing partnership with C40, drawing on your ideas. The Bank Group's investment in urban development was over $5.5 billion in 2010. We have some 21 client cities that are members of the C40, some of which, such as Jakarta, we've worked with for more than 50 years. And we have more than $15 billion invested in C40 cities. 
In Moscow, we're looking to advise on green city programming and conversion from mono cities. In Beijing and Shanghai, we're being asked to help finance infrastructure support. In Johannesburg, we're looking to bring investment to the South African Large Cities Support Program. And in Rio de Janeiro, we're developing support for a green city assistance program that includes emissions trading and support on city metrics and capacity. So the C40 is a natural extension of our relationship with the individual C40 cities. Later this morning, as Mayor Bloomberg mentioned, we'll sign a memorandum of understanding between the C40 and the World Bank Group. To simplify our ability to better serve all of you, the bank group plans to, exp to uh, initiate a one window access for cities. So you can get a better sense in one place of the bank group's capacity building, technical assistance, and available funding programs. We hope that this memorandum of understanding will help you draw on this more direct access in two areas in particular. First, the development of city climate action plans and strategies. The bank group will help you prepare standardized low carbon strategies, mitigation and adaptation strategies, and implementation plans, including through the provision of technical assistance. And second, a point that Mayor Bloomberg has emphasized, we need to develop standardized reporting of city greenhouse gas emissions. Mayor Bloomberg once gave me a great insight on his successful management of New York City. He told me that he tells his city executives, it says on the back of a dollar bill, in God we trust. So we will, but everybody else has to bring data. And he's exactly right. How can we really tackle this problem if we don't measure what we're doing? How will we know what works and what doesn't? How will we be able to get more payments to cities for reducing carbon if we don't know what they've accomplished? The bank group has promoted an international standard for reporting greenhouse gas emissions with the United Nations Environmental Program and with UN Habitat. To take this project further, the bank group is now supporting a broader agreement on standardized reporting of greenhouse gas emissions with the C40, ICLE, and other partners. Common international metrics will enable us to better track progress against targets. Equally important, metrics will facilitate cities' access to private finance that pays for carbon mitigation or supports climate adaptation. The bank group has also been supporting the mayor's task force on climate change, disaster risk, and the urban poor. The task force report includes case studies from Dar es Salaam, Jakarta, Mexico City, and here in Sao Paulo. The group's recommendations provide some very important pointers. First, cities have to integrate policies to reduce climate change and disaster risk for the poor into their urban planning and city management. These won't work if they're separate, disconnected efforts. And it appears that better policies for land use planning and service delivery have the biggest effects. Planners can also assist in making safe and affordable sites available for low-income residents despite climate change and disastrous natural events if they anticipate these risks.